Yes, we put out uh, results this week, and uh, we do underground drilling to you know define tons ahead of us, you know grow resources. That's kind of the usual, uh, always high grade, you know two to three meters at you know fifteen hundred to three thousand gram silver equivalent. But uh, the highlight hole of this week's uh, release seven and a half meters at twenty eight hundred silver equivalent. Uh, definitely one of the better holes that I've seen. Hello to viewers tuning into Assay TV. In this session, we're catching up with Exelon Resources, a mining company advancing a significant pipeline of precious metals production and growth stage assets. And I'm speaking with Brendan Cahill, Director, President and CEO of the company. Brendan, welcome. Hey, Adam, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for speaking with Assay TV. Thank you. So, uh, for, for, for viewers who might be new to the, uh, to the story, to the Exelon story, please could you give us um, a brief overview of the history and what's also the strategy of the company. Sure. So uh, Exelon, in, interesting company. We work in uh, five projects in three jurisdictions. Uh, our, our first asset is the Platosa silver mine in uh, Durango, Mexico, uh, which we discovered in the late 90s, was brought to us by Peter McGaw, uh, brought to production in 2005 and, and continued to operate. Uh, small mine, it does 2 million silver equivalent ounces a year, but very, very high grade. And we'll talk about some of the recent drill results, which are very interesting. Um, and uh, you know that generates the cash flow that we use for really the, the purpose of the company, which is to explore, you know, make discoveries and grow resources. Uh, the second thing that we're working on is a, is a gold project in Idaho, a couple gold projects in Idaho. We acquired Otis Gold back in uh, the spring of 2020. Uh, and that's an opportunity to grow the existing Kilgore deposit uh, into, we think, a three to five million ounce potential over time. And, and lots of very interesting underground and metallurgical opportunities there that we're chasing down. And then the third thing, and I think our most um, you know, immediately topical uh, project is our Silver City project in Saxony, Germany, which is uh, it's, it's a fascinating project because it really you know, covers a, a massive swath of history, uh, monetary policy, you know, geopolitics, uh, and, and, and on top of it, a high grade silver, right? So uh, that's a project that was mined for 800 years, uh, but we're the first ones ever to drill it. Uh, you know, for precious metals in modern times. So very exciting. Uh, and, uh, you know, can't wait to talk about that one too. Excellent. Yeah, some really exciting projects to be talking about here. Let's focus on Platosa, um, Mexico's highest grade silver mine, um, uh, which you mentioned, which is uh, great. What are the recent drilling results, the uh, activity there? Yes, yeah, so we put out uh, results this week and uh, we do underground drilling to, you know, define tons ahead of us. You know, grow resources. That's kind of the usual. Uh, always high grade. You know, two to three meters at you know fifteen hundred to three thousand gram silver equivalent. But uh, the highlight hole of this week's uh, release seven and a half meters at twenty eight hundred silver equivalent. Uh, definitely one of the better holes that I've seen uh, at Platosa, and I've been with Exxon since twenty twelve. But the really interesting thing that is that it's actually way up in the mine. You know, the deepest part of the mine is around level eight seventy. We're hitting this at nine fifty, so it's eighty meters. Um, above the uh, the deepest development heading in an area that had actually been mined historically. Um, we're seeing it in a much more vertical structure. So really trying to figure out what's going on there. And um, this, the nature of this deposit, it's mostly flat lying. So when you see something vertical, it is quite different than, than what we've seen uh, in most of the other drilling. It could be a chimney, uh, you know, the mantles that we mine are flat lying, chimneys are vertical, or it could be more of a, a feeder structure uh, which, which is what we're always looking for there. You know, why is Platosa where it is? Mm -hmm. uh, so right now we're, we've got a rig ready to go. It's already drilling follow-up targets and, uh, and we'll see how we do. But definitely more excitement than usual uh, from the underground drilling program. Yeah, certainly. Um, do you have sort of a key milestone as to when you're going to define that resource by the drilling around and sort of uh, really honing in on how big uh, this addition is going to be? Yeah, we've got one hole into it so far, so <laughs> give us a few more. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, the great thing about it is, I mean, we can drill, you know, a, one or two holes a day. These are, you know, 40 to 50 meter holes, uh, very close to the, the mineralization. Uh, so, you know, we can advance things quite quickly. But I uh, hope to have another update out on that, uh, you know, definitely before Christmas, all depending on the constant refrain of if we get assays back in time. Which yeah. uh, you know, I think everybody talks about these days as, as being slower than usual. Yeah, indeed, that is one of the sort of challenges. And you know, is there anything else on the ground? You know, sort of. Um, I, I guess 
as you're already producing, you're already set up. So um, maybe not pinching so much on this project, but is there anything else on the ground that, that is causing issue uh, with the exploration, for instance? Uh, I mean, at Platosa, you know, we've got a big project there. It's about 14,000 hectares or so. Uh, and, and it really is, you know, around the mine, grow the mine, expand it, but then also look for a similar Platosa style deposit on the broader project. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a very interesting target 11 kilometers away that we were drilling throughout the course of the year. Uh, you know, huge alteration footprint, about 25 times the, the footprint of Platosa. Uh, you know, we don't have a discovery there yet, but uh, more work is going to be done on that over the next while. Uh, and then we're always looking for the source, you know, of, of the of the uh, the Platosa deposit, a mm -hmm. uh, big copper gold scarn. Um, that's something we drill for, I would say, sporadically, intelligently, uh, without uh, you know wasting too much money on it because it is deeper, more expensive drilling. But some very good targets for that as well uh, on, on, at Platosa, you know, to focus on on the long term. In the operation, though, you know, producing nicely, uh, Q3 production results will be out soon enough. And uh, really have had four solid quarters since Q3 of last year. I uh, aim to have a, a fifth solid quarter now of just consistent production, you know, generating cash and, uh, and putting that to work with the drill bit. Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, moving on to the Kilgore project. Um, what's the resource expansion update there? Yeah, so Kilgore, uh, we acquired it when we bought Otis Gold in, in April of last year. And uh, at $1,800 gold, based on the PEA put out by Otis in, in mid-2019, it's got a $300 million uh, NPV. So, so very high quality asset, uh, relatively low capex, uh, low strip ratio, uh, very good uh, metallurgical recoveries. Mm -hmm. But we think all of those can improve further. We think this is a great foundational PEA. Uh, and that with drilling, um, it's going to be a much bigger resource. Uh, the economics are going to improve, and we just think there's better ways to do things than we're, you know, laid out in the PEA, which is totally normal. You know, a PEA is initial stage uh, economic document on a project. Uh, we we're bringing, you know, different angles on on how that how this project can be advanced. Uh, you know, two of the things that we're looking forward to um, reassaying a lot of the historic core. There's tons of free gold in the system. Uh, it doesn't always respond as as well as can be to fire assaying. We think the metallic screens could be a better way of, of finding more gold, gold without actually even having to drill more, more holes on the project. But then we're also waiting for the permit, which should be uh, you know, uh, for the next phase of drilling. And, uh, and that's fairly imminent. And uh, once we get back drilling, it's really focusing on high grade because the, the resource is about half a gram, 0.58 grams, just under a million ounces. But uh, right at the bottom of the, the, the resource and wide open at depth, you're seeing four to five grams over, over very broad widths of 60, even up to 95 meters. So following up on that more structurally controlled gold, uh, getting a better handle on, on the modeling around that, that's gonna be one of the first things that we drill uh, when we get drilling here, hopefully uh, before the end of the year. Yep, excellent. And presumably, you know, great infrastructure and sort of um, situation there uh, for the site um, and, and the history of what's gone on there already puts you at an advantage. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're right near a highway. Uh, it's kind of a, a half hour, 40 minute drive to Idaho Falls. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it is very nicely accessible. A lot of snow during the winter, so that's coming. But uh, but otherwise, it's a, it's a pretty good place to work. Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, and then the Silk City project in Saxony, uh, very exciting there. Um, tell us about um, what what's the status um, at the moment. Yeah, so we, we optioned this project in, in September 2019, and we started drilling there in, uh, in, in the middle of 2020. Uh, you know, very efficient permitting process for the first uh, drill program ever on the project. Mm -hmm. And just to give you a sense of scale, we drilled 16 holes, about 3,500 meters uh, in 2020. Uh, and the project is, at that time, 164 square kilometers. We've since expanded it to 340 square kilometers, uh, 36 kilometers of strike on, on the primary Bronzdorf license. So 16 holes over 35 kilometers of strike is, is basically 16 holes along the strike length of Timmins, right? You know, uh, if you can hit the geology, if you can hit the system, see the mineralization, get good assays with 16 drill holes, that's pretty good going. And, you know, we hit this big epithermal system on every hole. We saw beautiful high-grade silver species. There's actually a very high-grade silver specimen called Freibergite after Freiburg, which is the town uh, right beside the project. And we're seeing that. We're seeing paragrite which is a, an exceptionally high-grade silver species. And then we got some very good uh, drill results as well. 
uh, 1.3 meters at a th over 1,000 gram silver equivalent at, at a target called Grauerwolf. And I think perhaps one of the most interesting things is um, we were drawn to this project because it had this long history of mining and no modern day exploration. You know, these great grades, three to 4,000 gram per ton silver and, you know, Klein Voigtsberg or Voigtsberg, uh, the Bronsdorf mine. Um, but we've identified a new trend to the north. The trend that was mined, this nice schist trend, um, you know, everything kind of came up the surface, stuck out, was, was found in an outcrop and mined down. We've identified this made fix schist trend, which just stratigraphically a bit lower, but you know, from a geolog geological perspective, potentially more perspective or conducive for bigger deposits, right? It's going to be a bit deeper, mostly covered by, by overburden though. So it wasn't discovered, it wasn't mined, and we really have a, a fresh intact trend that runs for tens of kilometers, and we've already got high grade hits on that. So that's become a, a very uh, you know, important part of this year's exploration program. Um, and the other development there is that uh, you know, this is old uh, East Germany, you know, so lots of work done, lots of mining done uh, in Saxony up until the late 70s and exploration into, even into the 80s. So uh, we've started to collect some of that data. We got some magnetics data that was taken during GDR times, and that's leading di directly to new, to new, uh, to new uh, targets, which we'll be drilling this year. So uh, it's just a special place. You know, we've got the University of Freiburg, great students working for us. We've got the Helmholtz Institute. Uh, high Technology Institute for Mining and Exploration. Uh, you know, the, the Oberbergkampf, the regulator, sits in Freiburg, about five kilometers away from the project. Um, it's it's uh, got a smile on my face talking about it. it. It really is a special place. The next step is, you know, get those ore grade economic intercepts and uh, and start putting some volume on some of these uh, these targets that we developed last year. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's really the, the initial goal of this year's program, about 12,000 meters with two rigs. That's what's planned so far. Excellent. Yeah, it's great. So pedigree to, uh, to that um, project um, and so sort of support locally, as you've described. Um, I'm just thinking about, you know, the premise of um, uh, Europe, Europe and European governments now looking at transition metals, silver for its industrial application, for instance, and how strategically important they're thinking about mining again compared to sort of um, past few decades where it wasn't necessarily as high on the agenda. Uh, the timing's got to be uh, pretty good uh, and supportive. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, with every passing day, you know, uh, today it's 60 cargo ships in, in off the coast of California, which it can't land because, you know, an oil pipeline got clipped, right? Yep. And just the logistics uh, in the modern world seems to be getting worse rather than better, right? So uh, as well, on top of that, the sustainability of, of, you know, bringing nickel from Indonesia, you know, silver from, you know, halfway across the world. Um, it's just not as tenable as it was. Mm. Uh, and, um, you know, silver, is it's just essential for every kind of technology that you need. You need those gra those those five or ten grams of silver in every solar panel. There's no replacement for it, right? And mm -hmm. five or ten grams doesn't sound like a lot, but when you think about the number of ounces of silver mined versus the millions of pounds of copper, or lead, or zinc mined, uh, you know it's a matter of ratio. And uh, you know finding good silver deposits, high grade silver deposits in jurisdictions that are safe and where you can work and have supportive regulators. Uh, is getting harder and harder, uh, mm -hmm. but I think so. It's, I think Saxony, as we advance our, our programs and relationships in that state, uh, is going to come to the fore as as a very good place to operate. Yep, absolutely excellent. Um, there was another uh, evolution uh, um, project that I saw in your um, portfolio. Uh, is there an update there? Not much of an update on evolution right now. We're uh, we actually have a PhD student though doing some work down there. Uh, developing new targets. It's, fa it's a fascinating project, right? It's 30, 30, 35 kilometers of strike of the Northern Fresno silver trend, um, which has seen zero exploration because it's all undercover, right? And this, this theme of like finding things under, undercover, we're doing the same thing in, uh, in, in Freiburg and at Silver City. And, uh, you know, using modern technology to see through and find the stuff that wasn't easy to find with historic technology where, you know, they're unbelievable miners, but, uh, you know, they didn't have geophysics or geochem. So um, kind of on the back burner a little bit right now, but we are developing some interesting targets there and, you know, hopefully get those going forward in uh, 2022. Yep. Excellent. Um, and you mentioned in the summer in the beginning around, you know, 
the financials are good because of the production um, and, that, and that gives you the cash flow in order to go and um, look at other assets, explore, run drill campaigns. But just could you give the viewers an update on company financials? Yeah, so uh, end of Q2, we had uh, about 6.6 .6 million in, uh, in, in net working capital, um, you know, did about 10 million in, in revenue uh, in, in Q2. Uh, our financials will be out, uh, you know, before November 15th. We'll have an update out, out on timing with our, our production results, which should be out uh, kind of mid or second or third week of, uh, of October. Um, and, you know, I think the thing is, Platos is a small mine. Uh, you know, all sustaining costs are kind of in the high teens, low 20s um, when you include corporate G&A. Uh, but it does generate that, that bit of cash flow. But it's, our focus is really on discovery and resource growth and, you know, finding, uh, you know, even better things than what Platosa is being this, you know, mine that's been in operation now for 16 years or so. Yeah, indeed. Is there anything beyond organic growth that you're looking to sort of acquire or, or look at new assets? <laughs> Always. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we optioned Silver City, uh, brought that in. We acquired uh, organically the Evolution concessions. Uh, we acquired uh, on a public M&A deal, Otis Gold. Uh, I think we've got a really interesting portfolio right now. But um, I, I think with some of the assets that we have, uh, if we do enough work on them, you know, they'll be able to fly by themselves. And, uh, you know, we're, we're always looking to move things around or looking for deals. And it's really just about creating as much value as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and the market is interesting right now. You know, a couple of years ago, $15 silver, uh, investors were a lot less risk tolerant. Uh, now I think there's more interest and exposure to single assets and really kind of getting the leverage off of, you know, discovery and resource growth and, and moving into development. Mm. Um, so, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a nice chessboard to play with here and, and always looking for those kind of opportunities as well. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Well, Brendan, thanks very much for taking time to update us. We look forward to uh, keeping abreast of the projects, how they develop in the near term. And thanks for speaking with the assay. Great. Thanks, Otto. Talk to you soon. Cheers.